What would you like to see in the ASUS ROG Ally 2? Some of you may have heard speculation that there is one on the way, perhaps towards the end of 2024. Remember, this is all just rumors and speculations, and we don't really know what's true and what's not true. But I can tell you what is rumored about the ASUS ROG Ally 2. Instead of the Z1 Extreme chipset, they will feature AMD's Ryzen Z2 Extreme chipset, which is an improvement over the Zen 4 processor. What I want to talk to you guys about is what we really need to improve the ASUS ROG Ally. And what would you like to see that would make the ASUS ROG Ally a much better handheld? I'm going to go over the top 10 things I believe that can improve this handheld drastically and make it just about the perfect PC gaming handheld that there is out there. Now, the first one I do got to mention, who wouldn't love this CAO LED screen? You're going to have way better contrast, deeper blacks, much more accurate and true colors when you are gaming. It would make the experience much more immersive. And I'm sure all of you would agree with that. But there is one downfall when it does come to OLED. Batteries and OLED screens do not really like each other. In fact, OLEDs like to build up and produce a lot of heat. It would need a much more improved heat sink for the ASUS ROG Ally to be able to handle a OLED screen. Hopefully the engineers and the R&D department of the ASUS team can possibly do that. That brings me to number two, a much better and bigger battery life. Perhaps that should have been number one. That was the biggest issue I feel that I personally had with the ASUS ROG Ally. If it wasn't for the battery life, if you could game for three to four hours, that would be a big plus for the ASUS ROG Ally. We all know if we do get a larger battery for the device, we may have to sacrifice some weight for that. And is that a sacrifice that you would be willing to make? And if it is, make sure to comment down below that you would feel the same exact way, that you would be able to sacrifice weight in order to get much more longer gaming sessions without being so close to an outlet or your anchor power bank with you so you can charge it up back up to full. Number three for me, and this one, I gotta say, I know all of you might agree with this one. It needs to have better glass for the ASUS ROG Ally. It needs to have something more like the Gorilla Glass Armor, which is similar to what they use on the Samsung S24 Ultra. The reason why I bring up that device is because it has a non-reflective screen, which makes a big difference, especially if you're out in daylight or you're gaming right in a big bright light. You won't get that nasty reflection where you gotta kind of maneuver your ASUS ROG Ally to be able to see your screen clearly or bring up the brightness. ASUS ROG Ally can go nearly up to 500 nits of brightness, but you don't want to really keep pushing that limit of the ASUS ROG Ally for the brightness because then it will wear down on the battery and that would be a big pain. Imagine how much better it would be if the ASUS ROG Ally had Gorilla Glass armor on there while you are gaming. So that would be one of the top improvements I personally like. Of course, the cost of the device can go up. Number four for me is a trackpad on the back of the ASUS ROG Ally. Have you guys ever had a PS Vita? If you haven't, they had a really awesome idea. And no, not similar to what the Steam Deck has, but a trackpad on the back of the device. So instead of using your joysticks or your sticks in order to move around the cursors in order to click on the application or software that you would like, you can just put your finger on the back of the device, move it around, and then select it with pressing A or maybe even just double tap the back of the device, or maybe have some sort of clicking action for the back of the device. If they included a trackpad in the back of the ASUS ROG Ally, it would definitely enhance the Windows PC experience being on the go. Number five, it's gotta have a better improved SD card slot. I'm sure that ASUS listened to all our complaints when it came down to that. And more than likely, it's gonna have a way different placement than being on top of the ASUS ROG Ally. A lot of that was theoretically the problem because the heat dissipates from the top 
where it damages the SD card. It'll be evident enough if we see it in the Asus ROG Ally 2, where they move the SD card slot into a different location. Perhaps it's gonna be more on the bottom of the Asus ROG Ally. Be able to install all your games, all your saved files, different applications, whatever you need. Number six for me is the joysticks gotta be Hall Effect joysticks. And they also have to be swappable joysticks. Imagine how awesome it will be just to pop out the joystick and be able to swap out a taller one on the go. It would enhance the device much more, especially when you are playing a certain type of games. Action adventure games could require it. Perhaps you play first person shooters because you like the taller sticks on there. And it would be nice to have the different adjustments. Maybe you prefer a taller stick on the bottom side or maybe onto the left side of the joystick. It would add more customization and having Hall Effect joysticks would prevent a lot more wear. Of course, Hall Effect joysticks can increase the cost of the device. It shouldn't really increase it by much. It would make the Asus ROG Ally a much more premium PC handheld. Number seven, add storage options. It seems that every other company out there, whether it's Aoneo, MSI Claws doing it, and Lenovo's doing it, Steam Deck even does it, where they have different storage options. Not everybody wants to take apart their device in order to install a SSD NVMe. Want something easy enough, such as the SD card slot, as mentioned earlier, or a, even an option to where they're able to purchase a larger size for maybe an extra 50 bucks. Here's an idea, Zeus. Instead of going with a optional size difference, and if you choose to have one size for the Asus ROG Ally 2, maybe you guys can do something like this. Instead of having just a strictly NVMe where it's built inside the system, maybe swappable NVMe's could be something that you guys do, because that would be a great option for everybody. It would be easy enough, put it inside of an enclosure, and then just kind of stick it in similar to like you would with a SD card. That would make it the device much more premium and a lot more people would be interested in the Asus ROG Ally 2 if that were the case. Number eight for me, it's gotta be the different price options when it comes to the Asus ROG Ally. Kind of piggybacks off of number seven with the storage options, but instead of having a different processes why not just do different screen sizes? Have a seven inch, your standard size, and another one, maybe a 10 inch, because a lot of people are interested in larger sizes because then they can see the games even better. Maybe 10 inch is too much for somebody for portability, and they prefer the seven inch size. So if you do have different price options, instead of doing the whole different processes like a Z2 and a Z2 Extreme, nobody really wants to really pick between two different processors and everybody's more than likely gonna go with the Z2 Extreme anyway. So why not just have two different screen sizes like a seven inch or a 10 inch or maybe even 10 inches too big, maybe seven inch and nine inch. Those would be some great size options. It would add much more interest to buying different priced options when it comes to the Asus ROG Ally 2. Number nine for me, it's gotta be add more than one USB-C port because having one USB-C port isn't quite enough. Sure, you can add a USB-C hub and then add more options. But if it comes to USB-C, add one to the top of the device or even on the bottom of the device for easier docking, just say, or even on the side of the device, if you just wanna be able to hook it up to the wall much easier, that way you get you get more length instead of being having it the top face the outlet, you have the side of the device in your hand. Well, maybe the side wouldn't be a good idea because it would get in the way of gaming sessions, but maybe the top and the bottom would be the best choices when it comes to USB-C. Then you can also power up the device this way instead of relying on a USB hub to be powered as well. That would be a great option and that would really make it feel like a newer version of ASUS ROG Ally. Instead of just having just the one port, that port's gonna be taken up by something. Especially if you want a game like with a Envision Pro. Number 10, this one could be updated via software because it really could have more dock setting options. 
That way, when you have the Asus ROG Ally hooked up to your dock, have it have the option of different resolutions, different refresh rates, different options where you can be able to on dock mode, maybe you have a more extended desktop, or maybe you just prefer a duplicate desktop. Those would be some great options for the Asus ROG Ally if you guys come out with something like a dock mode. And if it was added to something like Armory Crate Lite, Asus did a great job personally to me with Asus ROG Armory Crate Lite because it doesn't really feel too much of a burden for the actual system for the ROG Ally 2. Famem guys, for the Asus ROG Ally 2, what would you guys like to see in that device? I hope you guys found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is interested or who loves the Asus ROG Ally as much as we all do, make sure you share this video with them. Also, if you're not part of the big wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my extender right here as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fam, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.